Okay, we are going to install uh, roof rails, the trim pieces to go underneath them, and uh, crossbars on this uh, Disco 5 2019 Land Rover Discovery. And as you can see right now, it does not have the roof rails, um, and we want to be able to add accessories up there. So here we go. Hey guys. A couple of things you will need. You will need some step ladders, even if you have running boards. I have two in place and a third one if I need it. Um, you will also need a couple of tools that they don't tell you about. One, this little guy, which you can buy in a kit at Advanced Auto or Napa Auto Parts or any of those places. It's plastic and it won't scratch the paint on the roof. Um, I also recommend a microfiber cloth to put between this and the paint uh, where you'll be removing parts just in case. And also this guy, which is a, a T40 uh, torque bit, T40. Um, I also want to go over a couple of things that they don't tell you. So I ordered these roof rails, really cool stuff. Uh, they came in. I was like, great, let's put them on. And then I found out that you need these two things, this and this. Uh, these are replacement pieces for these pieces, for this and for the black one in the back, back there. Um, because there are no holes here for you to bolt, to get to the bolts uh, to uh, adhere the roof rails. So. This kit with the rails does not come with these. You have to buy them separately. So I jumped online. Um, been getting a lot of this from, from LR Center Limited. That is the British way of spelling it. C-E-N-T-R-E -E, and then LTD for limited in uh, Liverpool. So yeah, um, it takes about five days to get here, always comes DHL, as you can see, uh, all of the boxes did. And we're gonna open these things up. All right, so we opened up the box and uh, these are the trim pieces that you're going to need in, uh, for, the, for the rear. And then these are the trim pieces from the front. I actually don't mind that these are black uh, because the roof rails are black. And I have uh, quite a bit of black trim going on on this. Just go five. So there you go. And now we're going to pop up there. We got to put this on before we can do anything else. And then we'll jump on to the, uh, to the roof rails themselves. And then finally the crossbars and then we'll be done. So I'm going to hop up there and uh, start taking off the existing trim. See, it kind of just pops up there. And then underneath, it has some uh, snaps that are gonna snap out as we go down. Super simple. So when you pop this off, you're gonna see all of these clips under here. You gotta remove these guys as well. Snap those off. And then you have two uh, that stayed on on each end and one there in the middle. Uh, these things are meant to be discarded uh, yeah, I guess you can keep it if you want to, but uh, it's meant to be discarded. Uh, so if it breaks, it's okay. Uh, this one did not, did not break coming off. Um, and I am going to lay it over like this to uh, help me make sure that I've got the right piece uh, when we go back in there. But first, I'm going to try and uh, clean up some of this in here. Well, while you have the opportunity, you should always take a chance to do a little cleaning in there. Put it back like brand new, right? So while we're taking these off, um, the ones that remain because they're already on the new piece, uh, you won't need to, to uh, keep these on here. These are rather difficult. I saw some other guys do this on YouTube and they did not go into uh, how difficult these are to get off. And then of course you'll wanna go back and get the adhesive off that did not rip away with the little clip. All right, and they will fly off. <laughs> So be ready for that. I just got hit in the face with one of them. 
I decided to go ahead while I had my rag and my handy tool up here to go ahead and remove this back piece right here as well uh, before I do the cleaning. Um, so work with all your tools at once, swap out to a cleaning tool and then clean front to back. So this comes off the exact same way. Um, just use your little pry tool, snap it loose. You'll see there's all kinds of, I mean, there's leaves, there's pollen, there's debris, all kinds of stuff in here. So we're going to get this thing cleaned up and, uh, and then come back and start the install. So in the cleanup process, uh, right here with the little sticky pads, you can kind of pull some of them off. Like it'll come most of the way, but it keeps breaking. I found a, a razor blade and just get up under it and kind of start releasing that part. Uh, I mean, this is not like a 20 minute job by any stretch of the imagination, um, but you can see how it starts to come loose and then you'll need to go back and get the little bits that aren't. You don't want to leave anything behind there because more adhesive has to go there. So pick at that for a while, get it good and clean. All right, as you get this thing cleaned up and done a pretty good job here so far, I gotta go back and remove the little sticky bits, but you're gonna find this seal here on the outside, uh, this rubber seal. And part of it will come off with the piece of trim, but you need to remove this entire thing because exactly where that is sitting is where your new adhesive is going to sit. And it is rubber underneath that as well, spongy rubber. So you need to make room for that so that you get a good, good connection right there. Okay, finally. Wow. Um... That's not as easy as some of these three and four minute videos on YouTube make it, uh, make it appear. Um, but it is, as you can see now, clean all the way down. All the seals have been taken off. Um, all the rubber cleared away and the adhesive cleared away. Uh, if you don't have uh, goo gone, uh, you can use WD-40. I've heard a lot of people say that, but... We did have Goo Gone, so I just used Goo Gone, okay? Um, and then I took a soapy rag and wiped it all off to get all that residue off the paint. And then a wet rag to wipe off the soap and then paper towels to, uh, to dry it all down. Um, but uh, we should be almost ready uh, to start uh, working on installing the trim pieces. Um, this right here is going to break off when you take the thing off. Um, and you have to pull this out because uh, there is a new stud and clip on the new trim that is going to go into this hole, okay? Um, so keep a heads up for that. And we're gonna let this dry for just a little bit uh, to make sure we get good adhesive connection. And then we'll come back and start on it. Okay, we got the new piece here. You can see it's got the spot for the roof rail attachment and i laid it up here to make sure it matched up uh, with the other piece even tried it in place to just sit it down everything looks good so i'm going to go ahead and flip it over and then peel off the adhesive protection here and here and down here and we're going to go ahead and um pop this thing in place.
do have a piece on the very end there. It's a little harder to get off. There we go. All right. And now we're going to uh, just flip over, snap it in place, and be good to go. Okay, so here's the thing. I got this back piece in. There is one of these cutouts. It's supposed to be two. So what I've done is just jumped on the phone with a Land Rover dealership. Uh, none of the ones here in Atlanta have it um, in stock, but one in Columbia, South Carolina does. They are overnighting that part to me, uh, this part. And I will pick back up on this project at noon tomorrow when, uh, when it's guaranteed delivered by. So, <laughs> but what I did was in my haste, I went ahead and stuck this guy on. So I have for the second time now, I've got to remove all of this. Luckily it hadn't been there for a long, long time. It should come off much easier, but it is going to take some goo gone. I've already tried. Uh, so there you go. Lesson learned. Make sure you got all the right parts in hand and everything goes together like it's supposed to and lays out like it's supposed to before you start the project. And for the love of God, before you adhere something down. Okay. That's my rant for the day. I'm going to call it a day and pick back up on it tomorrow. Okay. So since uh, the parts that uh, go on the back, the rear ditch finishers um, that uh, take this slot here and this slot here, um, since those were the wrong parts, uh, they're now just laying over here in the floor because I can't return them. So um, I could return them if I had not peeled off the adhesive strip. Keep that in mind. Check, make sure everything fits before you go uh, nuts like I did and um, had to order uh, new ones yesterday from Land Rover Columbia, South Carolina, which is about four or five hours away, uh, about four hours away from Atlanta. Uh, they overnighted them to me and they showed up by FedEx uh, this morning. So uh, next day and they do have the correct uh, two cutouts in each one. Uh, for here and here. So we're going to go ahead and put those on and uh, and then we're going to start uh, attaching the roof rails. Okay, here they go. They're uh, all in both sides and here and new ones over there as well. So we got our openings here, here and down there. Not sure if this piece needs to come out or not, this little foam square, but if it does, I'll pop it out with the uh, filler. Same thing on the other side um, with the uh, little trim piece. Uh, okay, so now we're on to the roof rails. Okay, so we've got this thing bolted in. Uh, you're gonna, your kit's going to come with some long versions of these uh, T40s and some short versions. These that go into the frame here, the top, these are the long versions. Short ones will not reach the threads. Long ones, one, two. Short ones up here, and then long ones down there and down there. That's simple. All right, so we got those two bolted in. I recommend starting up there because those, you have to kind of move the bar just a little bit to kind of line up the holes. And then when you do, and you get those going, come back here, get these started, Get these started and then you can tighten front middle and back and that would make this rubber seal do what it's supposed to do all the way around it's got a good seal and it is like i'm moving the whole vehicle it is solid so now we're going to pop over there do the same thing on the other side rinse and repeat has a lot of debris on it from the packaging you may want to clean it off first otherwise stuff sticking to your car everywhere all right, the last, you can see, roof rails on, bolted down front and back. Now we've got those cutouts that we gotta cover and the kit comes with these guys. Pop right in there, clips on both ends, just snap into place. There are three per side and there is six. So now we're gonna go snap these things in place. Um, 
It comes with this auxiliary sealant. I don't know what it's for, um, but I'm, I'm, so far I'm not using it. So let's go up to the top and see what this looks like when we snap it in. The only problem is it's too big. Maybe it goes on the back. <laughs> Could be some trial and error with this. Yeah, <laughs> see it pops right down in there. So the bigger ones go on the back, smaller ones on the front. And they say you just snap it down with your hands and there you go. So that fits in there. I haven't seen that video, seen that distinction on any other video anywhere. Uh, you can actually see the difference when you line these guys up. Um, yeah. Yeah. Two big ones on the back. That's for the other side. Short one for the front. Another big one on the back here. And then a short one on the front. So I'm going to pop these in place just like we did the last one. All right. So now that these bars, roof rails are on this Disco 5, we are going to put some of these guys on. I believe I am first going to open my garage door and make sure this thing's going to fit out once these guys are on. Uh, and if so, we're going to install these crossbars. This uh, rubber tread goes in the middle. Of course, they're locking. And they've got the Discovery imprint on either side since they are uh, official Land Rover products. Um, so that's the fitting instructions. I'm gonna have to scan this UR code here, this uh, discovery QR code here to uh, go get the instructions and maybe watch a video. So uh, I'm gonna do that and make the measurements and then decide if we're gonna put these guys on. Okay, so I've opened this up, just turned the key and open it right up, both ends. It looks like these are definitely different lengths. This one's a cup about four inches shorter. Um, and it looks like the longer one here goes on the front. There's actually a sticker back here that will show you Get that the reflection, a sticker that says, if this is the front of the vehicle, then this one goes right there towards the rear. Okay. Um, and it also shows you, uh, which way it should be pointing. So this is towards the front. So you want this side on the front of the vehicle, um, which happens to be the short side. You see this is not in the middle. This is off to this side, so this is the front, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and install these because I just think it's gonna be easier to do here on the workbench um, or fold-out table as opposed to uh, taking that on up on the roof. So I wanna jump in real quick on this because uh, I thought it would be, since the bottom of it looks like that, and there's a slot, you would just slide it in all the way down. That's not the case, you can't do it that way. You just line up one edge uh, with the aluminum there and just kind of push down in the center and it will pop right into place. And you just work your way down from one end to the other, going back and making sure it's got a good grip. Kind of keep it lined up there. And that's how you put this thing in. All right, to get this thing on correctly, you've got to get it into this back pin, but you're gonna find it's a little tight. So what you're gonna have to do is when you first get here, you're gonna have to pull this thing down and then out. And when you do, that will spread this mechanism right here. And then you can move it around to which I, I've done until I've heard, found it uh, clicking into the hole on the back and I don't know if you're going to be able to see that but it's it's in there when you push it forward it will not move forward or backwards so there you go um, that's how you loosen that took a few minutes to figure this guy out and then now that we've done that we're going to uh, we're going to come down and um, 
Okay, I did bring my laptop out here <laughs> to the garage uh, and found the instructions on the Land River website. I'll put a copy to this link in the uh, description below as well. But uh, we've done that. Now we're gonna move on to using one of the two tools that comes provided with this kit. Um, one is uh, this uh, hex tool. And another one is for measuring torque to make sure it's tight enough. Really cool how that thing works. So we're gonna take this one first, this tool, and we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna go turn that. Part D it says. <clears throat> Lock that down to get to it, and it's right there. Somewhere. More light, I need more light. Okay, so there was the other tool is this one, put this, put this thing in up here and you see it's got this measuring device on it for torque and then you come back down here, pull this down, tighten it up till you get some good torque, lay this guy up top, open this, push this up and now it is tight and locked in place, okay? It will not move. Bring this down. And lock it. And now, can't come off. Wow, that was way more difficult than it needed to be. So I'm installing the second one down, the one on the rear. I got it lined up perfectly the side come all the way across and yeah they just stick two of the same size in here um, so you're going to take a utility knife and trim this last one off right here which luckily we have and we're going to do that okay you would be surprised how fast the second one goes on uh, so there we are crossbars and roof rails installed whole thing, if I didn't have to order some extra parts from uh, a dealership four hours away, would have taken probably two to three hours. Um, but with all the cleaning and the residue removing and all of that stuff. However, uh, definitely worth doing yourself. So this disco came with no running boards and we put those on uh, but uh, two weekends, three weekends ago. No roof rails and no crossbars, and now we've added those. So, there you go. Love it. Looks great. Can't wait to get out in it. Thanks for watching, guys.